Today's news. Today's news. Sponsored by Chick Fil A. I'm Christopher Cruz in Washington. The long slog cleaning up after Hurricane Ian is now well underway. On CBS's Face the Nation, FEMA Administrator Deanna Criswell says the agency is in it for the long haul. We are going to provide assistance to all Floridians because we know that there are people that are just completely devastated from the storm. We are going to be there to support everybody that needs help. The death toll in Florida now 73. Four people died in North Carolina. President Biden and the First Lady will be in Puerto Rico tomorrow and Florida on Wednesday. Things are slowly improving in parts of Florida, but there's a long way to go, says WTOP News reporter Melissa Howell. Here in Orlando, roads have reopened and we're starting to see less debris littering yards and parking lots, but driving about an hour north of here toward Port Orange, not much has changed. Many roads are still closed. Over in some of the coastal towns like Naples and Fort Myers, those vacation areas are just unrecognizable. Some beaches out there are quite honestly just gone. Seven Americans who'd been imprisoned in Venezuela have been free in exchange for convicted drug smugglers who had been held in the U.S. Florida Senator Marco Rubio tells CNN the swap was a bad idea. Seven innocent American hostages in exchange for two convicted drug dealers who happen to be the nephews of Maduro is a huge win for Maduro and unfortunately puts Americans all over the world now in danger. Five of the Americans were oil executives in prison for almost five years. A horrific scene at a soccer game in Indonesia Saturday. The BBC's Eileen McHugh. Officials say 125 people died at the match at Malang in East Java. Thousands of fans panicked and rushed for an exit after police fired tear gas at them when they invaded the pitch. Many people were crushed in the ensuing stampede. How should the West respond to Russian President Vladimir Putin's threat to use nuclear force in Ukraine? On Face the Nation, former National Security Advisor H.R. McMaster. Well, I think the message to him is if you use a nuclear weapon, it's a suicide weapon. And, and the response from NATO and the United States doesn't have to be nuclear. The retired general says in the end he doesn't think Putin will use nuclear weapons. The former director of the U.S. Cybersecurity Agency, Chris Krebs, tells Face the Nation he thinks police should be prepared to protect election workers during the midterm. We do need local law enforcement, I think, to get more involved in investigating threats, protecting uh, election workers themselves. Krebs also says more attention needs to be paid to people with political agendas who are part of the elections process, so-called insiders. The polls have now closed in Brazil, the world's fourth largest democracy. Far-right incumbent President Jair Bolsonaro faces leftist former President Luis Inacio Lula da Silva, who polls show has a commanding lead. This is CBS News. Well, that's today's news. Today's news. I didn't hear any good news, did you? I didn't think so. I guess it's all about perspective. The glass is half full. Well, as always, I want to thank you again for coming along with me on these Dash Cam News Adventures. You know the drill. Peace. Love. And all that hippie jazz. Bye-bye, everybody.